Welcome to Central Moments. We call these moments because they're each day a moment around God's Word and prayer. I'm so glad that you've joined with me today. We're walking through Isaiah and hitting some highlights. Um, I'm covering some verses that the Lord spoke to me about in my younger years as I would spend a lot of time reading and meditating in Isaiah. What a great prophet he was. 66 chapters in uh, the, uh, the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. And we come in Isaiah 43 and 44 to a beautiful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it starts in an interesting way. Jesus, uh, God invites you and me. Um, he invites us to a debate with him. <laughs> to a debate with him. See, let's, have an, let's have a debate. Verse 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions and for my own sake remembers your sins no more. That's the God I want to be in your life. And that's the God I'm going to be to Israel, he says. So here's the debate invitation. Verse 26, review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Now, your first father sinned, and those I sent to teach you rebelled against me. So already we can feel like we're losing that debate. God invites us to say, okay, let's have a debate. Uh, show me your cards. Um, show me all the evidence of your innocence. Show me all the evidence that you don't need my forgiveness. Uh, but may I start with the fact that for generations you've rebelled against me. And, you know, and the Apostle Paul would say that because, because of Adam's sin, we, we've all sinned. Death has come upon us all. We, we all have this sinful nature. In fact, he said, all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. When it comes to debating our innocence with a holy God, we lose that debate. But Isaiah 44 goes on, verse 1, to say, But now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, who I have chosen. In other words, this is God speaking to his people, like he would speak to us as his people in Christ now. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you, don't be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Now, I've lost track of the number of times God said in Isaiah alone, do not be afraid to his people. But, but here he gives us a great reason. For I will pour water on thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. And I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. And he was saying, Israel, you've rebelled against me for years. But I'm going to make provision for your forgiveness. And I'm going to restore you and give you my spirit. All of this comes embodied now in Jesus. It points to the, what the Messiah would do. And this is the gospel. This is the fact that we lose the argument over our innocence. We finally face up that we all, all have sinned. I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I need forgiveness. So Jesus sent his son to pay the price for our sin. He was punished instead of us. We should have hung on the cross in punishment for the evil that's in, that we've acted out in our own lives the things we've done to hurt other people and to offend the holy God. We should have paid for that, but Jesus paid for it. And in return, what do we get? We get the gift of his resurrection life. I will pour out my spirit on thirsty land. And our guilty hearts come to Jesus for forgiveness, but our sin has caused us to be spiritually dead, and so we're like dry and thirsty land, our souls. But he comes and pours the water of his spirit upon our souls. And, and he said, on your lives and on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. May God just do this in our lives today. May his, the water of his spirit come into the dry places of our soul. And it can happen because in Jesus, our sin is taken away. And once our sin is taken away, once we've lost the debate over our innocence and we finally give in and say, yes, we're guilty, and then we find a God of forgiveness, uh, then, then we find that his forgiveness leads to new life. Just as Jesus rose from the dead three days after his crucifixion, my God, he comes in resurrection life to you and to me and to take the dryness and deadness of our souls. Let's never get, let's never get used to that. Let's never take that for granted. He is here with living water. He is here for forgiveness if that's what you need. He is here with love that we just can't explain. 
So, Father, we thank you that um, in that debate over our innocence, we, we do get to lose. And you pronounce us guilty, and then you die in our place to forgive us, and then you pour your Spirit upon us. What a wonder. And may God, we have open doors today to share that good news with other people. And where we may be doubting our own salvation, may we just be reassured that we've been loved with an everlasting love that can never be explained, that your grace is beyond reckoning. My God, we thank you for the free gift of your grace and your love. We thank you that you find us guilty, but you forgive us and you fill us. And we praise you for this. We live in this today. We honor you for this. We embrace it afresh today. Let us be people of the gospel today with confidence in you and your spirit leading us forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.